into the wild sky yonder, meet the wind, level and true. If you live to be a gray-haired wonder, meet the nose out of the blue. Flying men guarding the nation's border will be there all the time. This is a very important moment, a very important scene. And fortunately, it's happening more and more frequently. To some of you, it may be unfamiliar. Yet others of you may recognize the significance of that Army command car and the curious look on the faces of that combat crew. And among them is a young man to whom this day is one of precious remembrance and importance. Yes, that's Rear Gunner Corporal Williams, or Pee Wee, as the boys call him. This is his day, but there were a lot of other days before this one, and it's worth telling about. It's quite a yarn. It all started where it started for most, right in that glass fishbowl. But what happened after that? Well, let's just track this story down. Yes, there's always a certain quota in the Air Force for enlisted men. What branch do you feel you're qualified for, Williams? Kind of thought I'd like to get close to one of them flying fortresses. I see, flying fortress. You like the big ships. Yes, sir. Well, he got close to a big plane, all right. Very close. That's known as really starting from the bottom. And maybe Pee Wee and a lot of other little fellows don't feel so important, but the gunnery schools are always on the lookout for men short on height, long on ambition. Morning, Pee Wee. Morning. You know, Pee Wee, you look like you'd kind of fit in the inside of that fishbowl. Well, I'd sure like to be in there, sir. I'd like to shoot a gun again, too, sir. Ever handled one before? Well, not one of these caliber 50s, no, sir. But I had an old shooting iron back home I used to like. I used to knock down them black killers with it. Black killers? What's the, oh, them crows. We call them black killers. They're mean birds. They used to raid the duck nest, sir. I got so that I could peg them on the wings. Pretty good shot, huh? Well, not bad, sir. Sergeant. Take Pee-wee over to the ski range. He might make a gunner. Right there. Okay, Williams. Let's go. Okay, Williams. Pull! Was that all I have to do, hit that little thing? That's all you have to do, so <laughs> Okay. Pull! Pull! Six out of six. Yeah. Williams. Sir. Billy, how'd you like to go to gunnery school? Oh, yes, sir. I like that fire. <laughs> There they go, embryo marksmen of the sky. Those fellows mean business. You'll be hearing from them. They're aviation's mightiest little men. Where do they come from? From every corner of America. And here they are, student gunners at one of America's three vast gunnery schools. Yes, and there's Pee Wee. It's his first day, and he's on the brink of a new world. Gentlemen, you volunteered to come to this station to learn to become combat aerial gunners. Inasmuch as there are only 210 hours of available instruction time, it will be necessary for each and every one of you to thoroughly apply yourselves to make use of every moment while you are here. And they will be divided into small groups of six to ten men. Each group will have one instructor who will be your guide and teacher throughout the five weeks of this course. The job of the aerial gunner is a vital and important one. 
The lives of your combat crew and the success of a mission depend on your shooting ability. Your government is aware of the importance of flexible gunners in the victorious pursuit of this war. They know that the fire from your guns is the fire of freedom. Good luck. Aim well and shoot straight. Cage. Cut. Aim well and shoot straight. That's a hot one. You know, back in Coney Island, I was a regular patsy for a shooting gallery. Used to blow all my dough trying to win a Cupid doll for my girl. My girl, she's nuts for Cupid's, and I can't hit the side of a bond. You mean you got prizes for shooting? Certainly. Yeah. Well, back in Kansas, we didn't get nothing except maybe the pleasure of hitting down crows. Well, at least you had a workout with a gun. Me, I'm starting from scratch. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. I'm itching to start. Yeah, me too. I wonder how long for them classes, John. How long? Why, brother, you're starting in right now. Now, the first thing you have to know about the caliber 30 machine gun is the nomenclature and the part functions of the gun. Now, this is your accelerator. It's the timing device for all recoiling parts. This is your cocking lever, which is your fire control. This is your driving spring. Williams? You increase the sight face. What must you do to the diameter of the ring sight in order to keep the same miles per hour reference sight? Well, you, you have to increase the diameter. Very good. Questions and answers every day faster than bullets. This is a class in exterior ballistics. In other words, what happens to that bullet after it's fired? What are the five forces that affect the trajectory? Propellant charge? Uh, movement at a mount. Air resistance? Gravity and drift. Now remember, men, this is a 150 mile per hour ring sight only when used with an 8 inch sight face. As you know, the sight face, the distance from the gunner's eye, to the ring sight. You got that? Pretty scientific stuff, and it's all in the first week. And there are a few other items our young gunners are learning, like bullet patterns and methods of fire. And toward the end of that first week, that itching trigger finger of Pee Wee's gets its first workout. Squad, hold! Jim, hey! Hold up! Well, get a load of those mounted turrets. This is what they've been waiting for. But we're still in the first week, and the boys aren't ready to start firing yet. Right now, they're merely getting acquainted with the operation of the turret. They're discovering how to turn on azimuth and zenith, and where that master gun switch is. That's some workout for gunners just a week old. But they're already getting the feel of that turret. And before you can say caliber 50, they'll be veterans. And what do you think? After two weeks of going to school, he finds himself on the BB range. But on the second week, the boys are formally introduced to Grandpa. Well, there's one advantage that you men have. You've got a great gun in your hands to protect yourself. Now, don't forget that. Yes, sir, a gunner's best friend is his grandpa. Williams, how do you estimate the apparent speed of an enemy aircraft? By the time it takes to get from the center of the ring sight to the outer edge of the ring sight. That's right. Northcott, what's the first thing you notice before fire? Identify the enemy craft. That's right. The red flag. That means there's firing going on. Berlin and Tokyo, beware. These young marksmen are picking up the art of rapid sight alignment and the proper handling of a gun. Whoa! No country club or millionaire shooting lodge offers a finer skeet range than this one of Uncle Sam's, where gunners acquire the precision and practice of learning how to lead the target. Whoa! Gunners on wheels, trucking on down. This is the moving base range, and it's plenty tricky. A little surprise for the boys who thought they were getting to be expert shooters. With the truck rolling along in one direction and the targets flying out in a dozen different directions, well, just try it, Pee Wee. Not bad, Private Williams, not bad. Looks as if you're learning a few new twists by getting your lead behind the target. It's a gay day and a sweet song when these lads start heading out for actual firing on moving targets Assimilating combat shooting on the ground-to-ground -ground turrets. Right on it, fast. Huh? Yeah, you can get it. Williams, you've 
learn in construction of sight and relative speed how to estimate your lead. Now, here's your problem. The range from uh, mount to front track is 200 yards. The speed of the target is 30 miles an hour. What's your lead? A quarter of an inch outside my inner ring. OK. I'll track your target and fire on whistle. the kill, tabulating the score of each student. The bullets, dipped in different colored lithographic paints, leave their mark on the canvas, thus enabling the instructor to see how many hits the gunner has scored. Hey, Pee, we get a load of my score there. Boy, if I'd had a gun like that 50 caliber, just think of the amount of cupid dogs I could have knocked off a of Coney Island. You can't wear any cupids in the Air Force, Benny. But if you keep on shooting like this, we'll let you get a couple of japs. Hey, save some for the rest of us, Sarge. Not so fast there, gunner. More ground school and study and midnight oil. But all the better to shoot well. Sight harmonization is the adjustment of the sight to the gun so that the line of sight will intersect the trajectory of the projectile at the desired range. Hey, we're sure learning some mighty fancy words. You said it. Hey, wait till the boys in Brooklyn hear me make with the scientific routine. Well, here it is, the beginning of the fourth week, and they're back on the range. But there's one difference. Up until now, the gunner has learned how to shoot under normal conditions. Now, however, on this malfunction range, he runs into trouble. He finds out what to do when things go wrong. Another precaution for the gunner's protection. Men, in each one of these guns, we have put broken parts or damaged rounds. You will learn to determine by the action of your gun just what the malfunction is. Now remember this. The gunner in the air must be able to find the cause of a stoppage or jam with the greatest possible speed and without completely stripping his gun. Williams, charge your gun and fire. It won't feed. What do you think's wrong? I don't know. Oh, the belt. Speed Paul won't work. That's right. It needs a new spring. Williams, what type of aircraft is this? Ju-87, B German Stuka. Identifying characteristics? Uh, fixed landing gear. Negative dihedral wings. And uh, from this side? A square fin in the offset cockpit. Not bad. Yes, Pee Wee is far from that Kansas farm now. He's explored a labyrinth of technical and ballistic knowledge that makes the American aerial gunner the keenest in the world. Hey, Benny! Benny! Come here, get up! Look! What's with I... you? Well, I just got a letter from Lieutenant Ames, and he's holding a spot for me on a B-24. No kidding. Putting you in a tail? Yeah, he figures I kind of fit there, see? You know, that's about the best news I ever had. Eh, hey, you got it coming to you. Well, you know, back around home, guys used to kid me. Oh, they used to, they used to say I was the most unlikely to succeed. Well, they kidded me so much, I began to think they had some. But this letter is gonna change all that. You said it. Why, you belong in that fishbowl like, uh, uh, like, uh... Like corn in a husk. Sure, yeah. sure. You can tell them all what time it is sure now. Sure, I can. Look, Pee Wee, I've been taking a gander at this war. Now, let me tell you something. The more I sit, from my tail seat, it's the gunner boys that are giving out with the stuff that's going to decide this clam bait. Well, yeah. Of course, it's only my personal opinion, but... Well, you know, the way I look at it, it takes all kinds of guys doing all kinds of jobs to win this war, see? But ours is, I figure, is a mighty big job. And by golly, it makes you feel big just to be in it. Hey, fellas, hurry up. It's 9 o'clock. We're due out on the range for night firing. This is 
isn't the 4th of July, it's just shooting in the dark, learning the use of tracer bullets. And in case you didn't know, the object of tracer bullets is to give the gunner an idea of his accuracy and lead. Those gunners will tell you that this is fascinating stuff. Those bullets, by the way, are chemically treated so that they light up, giving the gunner a perfect preview of where his live bullets are going. Hey, Benny! Yeah? Where you going on your path? Listen, chum, after four weeks in this school, I'm going to realize a lifelong ambition. Up again, mister. Or oh, give us a break, will you, soldier? You know, you're going to ship me into bankruptcy. Gunners of the ground, farewell. Yes, it's the fifth and last week, and what a week. The gunner takes to the air, putting into practice everything he's learned during the past month. He's about to get a sniff of ozone at an altitude of 10,000 feet. You going to harmonize and check, Pee-wee? Yes, Sarge. Properly mounted. Right. Scared? Well, I'm nervous, but not scared. Good boy. No, they're not scared, these budding Galahads of gunnery. They're eager and anxious to get the feel of actual combat. And here, in air-to-air -air shooting, they get it. Approaching the tow target, the gunner's aim is level. This is straight beam firing, and is the first step in air-to-air -air shooting. And store your gun. Get ready to fire when target comes into range. days, maneuvers become a little more elaborate. Learning relative speed firing, the plane dives for speed, and it's a keen-eyed marksman who can calculate his target with some neat and clean cross-under firing. Williams, R.E. Congratulations, Williams. Thank you, sir. Yes, this is a golden moment, a moment of proud achievement when Pee Wee Williams, along with hundreds of other gunners, gets his diploma. This diploma is his passport into the vistas of victory. Meet the crew. They've got a block. Uh, yes, Senator Doyle. Hi, do we? Yes, United, sir. Yes, Sergeant how are you? Sure. Yes, that yes. fishbowl's waiting for you. One room apartment just for you. Well, it looks like Holmes. <laughs> All right, man, your station's men. Realizing a long visional dream, Pee Wee, a full fledged, flexible gunner, becomes a part of America's vast striking air force. And he joins the valiant flyers heading for a place called Over There. Things happened thick and fast over there, and Pee Wee got his first taste of combat under fire. One zero approaching from the left. Those weeks at gunnery school are flashing through his mind. gunners of the crew had a lot of notches in their belts. Notches for annihilating Nipponese planes. And then, one dawn, July 15th, the crew took off on a bombing mission. A particular mission of strategic importance. 
Pee-wee discovered that sitting out on the tail turret of a bomber is a great spot because you can always see the enemy before he sees you. And he also found out that the guy in the tail is protected by the finest all-steel armor plate in the world. They were ordered to attack an elusive Jap aircraft carrier. Once the target was sighted, every keen-eyed member of that crew swung into action. The pilot, bombardiers, the gunners at their stations. Well, they made it. Direct hits with those 600-pounders of TNT blowing up right in Hirohito's face. But then the real trouble started. Five zero setting in. Man your stations. memorable day with you. War doesn't always allow us much time, so just let me say that I'm as proud of you as the crew members and crewmates whose lives you saved. I've had the pleasure of presenting medals to many gunners since this conflict began. And when the Army Air Force pays tribute to you, it also recognizes the heroic and brilliant work of the gunners who, since the beginning, have proved how indispensable they are in achieving victory. And their importance to the Air Force can never be stressed too much. Our pilots fly the planes, our navigators tell them where to go, our bombardiers bomb their targets. Those same gunners are continuing every day to help blast the enemy from the sky. But you are the men who bring them home safe. You gunners are the modern knights of fire, the administrators of life and death, an integral part of the greatest all-American team. You and thousands of intrepid, valiant gunners 
of the Army Air Force. With this Distinguished Service Medal, I wish you the best of luck. May God bless you all. Thank you.